I am back, you guys, to share with you two absolutely delicious recipes. Hey guys, Kira here from 50 Shades of Mom, tips for all shades of mom life. And in today's video, I am back to share with you two recipes. Both of them are low carb. You can really do them to any one of your dietary preferences, but both of them is so, so good. So the first one is a chicken cheesy bake. It is so rich and so flavorful and so decadent, but super filling, like filled with, if you like cheese, this is the recipe for you. It is super cheesy and very, very hearty. I was going to serve it with salad and we ended up not eating anything else but this chicken bake, but it was really, really good and something we will definitely make again. I found the recipe on Pinterest and then just did a little bit of tweaking to work for my family and now I wanted to share that with you guys. And then the next recipe is going to be some country style ribs in the crock pot. Now that recipe is pretty simple. It's not a whole lot to it, but the key to that recipe is my rib rub. So I have a compilation of spices and flavors that I've put together myself over the years and I share that with you guys and then we rub the ribs down with them and then cook this like I said pretty basic recipe but they both are absolutely delicious and something I wanted to share with you today so I'm going to bring you down to my counter and I'm going to share with you this deliciousness. So first up is this chicken cheesy bake. And this is a recipe that I told you guys I found on Pinterest and just tweaked it just a tiny bit to fit my family's needs. So I'll make sure to link the original recipe down below in the description box. And as you guys can see, there's tons of different kinds of cheeses and fats on this countertop. You definitely can tell this is a keto based recipe because it is full of protein and full of fat so here is some bacon that I already had cooked up we're just gonna heat it up I had this done already from meal prep and then it also asks you when you're cooking the bacon to reserve some bacon grease but I always have some liquid gold on hand so I just pulled the bacon grease out of my refrigerator you're going to need one full block eight ounces of cream cheese I prefer Philadelphia if possible it melts better and there's less carbs we need some heavy cream some some mayo, some parm cheese. And then here I just have some spices already put in here. There's onion powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper, and some paprika. And then it also calls for mozzarella. It calls for shredded. I didn't have shredded. I had this pre-sliced kind, but it ended up being perfectly fine and working out just as we needed it to. I have a basket of mushrooms here. I have two cups of already shredded cheddar cheese. In this bowl already diced, I have a half of a red onion, and then I also have two heaping tablespoons of already chopped garlic. And then for our chicken, I have a rotisserie chicken that I made right here at home in my rotisserie oven. So we're just gonna pull this apart and use it chopped, or you can already buy a chopped chicken or chopped rotisserie from the grocery store, whatever works best for you, but I happen to love, love, love my rotisserie. So for our first steps, we're gonna get our sauce going. The sauce reminds me of a very rich and decadent Alfredo. So first you're gonna start off with your eight ounce block of cream cheese. You're gonna pour in your heavy cream. You're gonna pour in your parm cheese. You're gonna add in that mayo. Dump in that whole bowl of mixed spices. And then we're just gonna go ahead and give this a good stir. You're gonna keep it on a medium low until everything just kind of melts and makes that Alfredo consistency. And then we're just gonna dump in those two cups of shredded cheddar. And we're gonna do the same thing and just give it a good stir until it gets all good and creamy. So now that our sauce is done, I left it on the back burner on low just to stay that creamy consistency. And now we're going to prep our rotisserie chicken. So I mentioned to you guys that I use a rotisserie oven right here in my house. This is not a sponsored video. I just absolutely love this machine. Kasori sent this to me a while ago and I literally use it every single day, whether I'm using it to just toast a bagel or whether I'm making a rotisserie chicken. And I absolutely love doing these right here in my house because I literally have one at my disposal every time. So this was one that I just made in a meal prep and then I put it off to the side to cool 
bowl and once it was ready then it was time for us to go ahead and prep it for this recipe so I have to tie this thing up really good to get it to stay on that rod and turn. So it took a little bit of time to just kind of remove all of his threads and his bindings that hold him to that rod. No, this is not a Fifty Shades of Chicken. This is just a regular recipe video. But once I got all of his strings removed, I just went ahead and got as much meat off the carcass as I possibly could. The recipe called for two cups of cut up or diced already shredded chicken, but I literally just used whatever I was able to get off of this chicken. And then I didn't really fret about the rest because I'm really good about taking the carcass when I'm done. I'll boil everything off. I use it for soup and broth. So whatever I couldn't get off, I used for later, but I pulled as much meat as I possibly could get. And then that's what I used to cut up and put into the recipe. Now, something else that I did this particular week in meal prep was already get my bacon together that I knew I was going to need for this recipe. So I do meal prep every single week and I film it and then every other week or so I share it with you guys. So if you are interested in any kind of meal prep video and you guys are new, I'll link my latest one up above. But like I said, this was me already setting this, knowing that I was going to use it later on in the week. And I knew that the recipe called for bacon grease, although I saved mine anyway. But this was just me already getting it set up and ready. And then now I'm just going to take this bacon that I already have cooked and I'm going to throw it in into the microwave and get it a little bit more crispy. Now it's time to sweat our veggies. So I put our red onion and our garlic in some butter at the bottom of the pan and let them cook down for a little while. And then probably about five minutes or so, once the air got really fragrant, then I added in our mushrooms and I sweat those down about another five minutes or so. So while those were cooking, our bacon was done out of the microwave and I had let it cool and then now it was time for us to chop it they want you to get like nice sized pieces but still not huge strips that we're going to fold into this recipe Now, once we're done chopping our bacon, our veggies are all sweated down, everything's tender and ready to go. And so now it's time to just kind of mix everything together. So we're gonna add that bacon that we chopped to our cooked veggies, and then we're gonna throw in that chicken that we cut up and got that ready. And then now we're also going to add in that sauce that I've had sitting on the back of the stove, just kind of staying warm so that it's easier for us to mix everything together. And now we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna mix all of this all together in this one pot and then we're going to put it inside of a casserole dish that we're going to spray down with just a little bit of cooking spray and then we'll top that with our mozzarella. Now, if you can possibly believe it, it is time for more cheese. So I mentioned earlier that this recipe called for shredded cheese, but all I had was this pre-sliced mozzarella, but that worked out perfectly fine. I just broke it up and tried to put it where I figured once it melted, it would create like a top layer, but that's essentially what you're doing. Just giving a top a cheesy layer, just like you would pizza. And then once this is done, we're going to throw this in a 350 degree oven for only about 20 to 25 minutes. Remember everything inside is already cooked. So we're really just making this hot and cheesy and we want to get that mozzarella on top to melt. And when it comes out, it is so cheesy and so delicious. And I am so, so sorry that I didn't get a picture of this outside of the pan. I only got this little overview of it. We were all just so excited about eating this. It smelled so delicious and we were dying to eat it. And we just sat down. Like I said, we didn't even serve it with anything. We all just had this on our plates and we were so filled. There was a little bit of leftovers, but I apologize. I never got any more of that, but that truly was an amazing recipe. And like I said, we will cook that again. 
So now we're going on to our next recipe, and this is the one that I'm most excited about sharing with you guys, because today we're going to make some country style ribs in the crock pot, but the key to this recipe is rubbing it down with my rib rub. So this is like something I've been doing for years, and I'm excited to share it with you guys. So when I portioned these ribs, I portioned them in two separate bags. I was going to do a freezer meal and a regular dinner, but I decided I'm going to cook them both and just use it for leftovers for lunches. And then in here, I have some of the Hughes sugar-free barbecue sauce, and I have one onion. But we're not going to touch any of that right now because we have to focus on making this rib rub. So here are the flavors that you're going to need to make this rub. Now, one thing that I will su suggest is different kinds of paprika. I only have regular, but you're going to need some cumin. You're going to need some minced onion. Again, this is just regular paprika, but I prefer either a smoked or a sweet. I have a chipotle chili pepper, the ground kind that really makes a huge, huge difference in the recipe. And here is some brown sugar, but I'm using the swerve kind. You can use whatever kind that you like. I have the ground black pepper and some ground salt here, and we need quite a bit of that. And then right here, I just have some onion powder and garlic powder. And we are going to be using fresh onion like you guys saw in the recipe, but this really makes a difference when you're making that rub that we're going to use to put on top of the ribs. So first things first, we're just going to combine all of these rib flavors. And I went ahead and put the ground pepper and the salt in a bowl all already because honestly did you really want to sit there and watch me grind that no you didn't um, but I will put the exact measurements of everything that I use in the description box so that you guys can see but I'm pretty much staying with tablespoon measurements here so the salt and pepper went in and then the cumin went in now we're using that chipotle pepper now we're going to put in that paprika the garlic powder the onion powder and our minced onion. Can't forget the brown sugar. That is absolutely the best part. It really comes through in this recipe and you get the sweet and the sultry and the spicy flavor. This was probably one of the best recipes that I've made this year so far and my boys were like drooling over this. So once you get an opportunity to get everything into the bowl, you're just going to give it a good stir and then we're gonna set that aside while we prep our veggie. Now we don't have much of a veggie to prep. The only thing that goes in this recipe is onion and you do not want to make these onion pieces really small. You don't want them to dissipate and just disappear inside of the recipe. You actually really want a piece of that chunk. So I literally just chunked them and then sprayed the inside of my crock pot with a little bit of olive oil cooking spray and then I layered a third of the onions on the bottom. Normally I would do half and then put the ribs in and then do the other half but we're going to end up layering them with the amount of ribs that we have. So we're just going to take a third of those onions and we're going to throw them on the bottom and then we're going to layer one layer of those ribs on top. So I had 10 ribs in total, and so I'm going to layer five of them on top of those onions. And then we're gonna sprinkle on some of that rib rub. Now, if you really wanna get down and dirty, you can take this rub and physically rub it into the flesh of the meat. That's why it's called a rub. A lot of ribs are rubbed down by hand. I really didn't feel like doing that this particular day. There was a lot of ribs and I was in a rush. Even though this cooks in the crock pot on high for four hours, I had other things I needed to do that day. And so I wasn't in the mood to just get like nasty and dirty. So I just sprinkled it on there, but it doesn't change the flavor at all. So you're gonna flip them over and you're gonna put a sprinkle of that rub on the other side. And then now we're gonna come in with another third of those onions. And we're just gonna lay it on top of what we just created. And then we're gonna repeat the same steps that we just did before, adding in the ribs, sprinkling that rub, flipping them over and sprinkling the rub on again. And then we're gonna put the lid on and we're gonna set it for, like I said, on high for four hours.
Now here is what the ribs look like after the four hours. You can see why I like the big chunks of onion because that is something that ends up in your plate and it really adds to the flavor while you're eating the pork. And you can also see why I put no fluid into the crock pot at all because ribs are very greasy and oily. Look at all the juice and the oils that those ribs dispersed while they were cooking. Now I've never layered them before. I've always just had enough or they've been a size that's good enough for me to just put them in the crock pot. But you could see I stole a little piece from right there just to taste it to see if it was done. And even layered, it was so tender and it had all the flavor and everything just kind of congealed together. But there's still just one more step. I don't know about you guys, but I like a really crispy kind of rib. I like them to have like that crunch. I like that caramelization of the barbecue sauce. So we're going to take all of those ribs that we just cooked in the crock pot and we're going to transfer them to a sheet pan because we're going to stick them in the oven and give them that crisp. But first, we're going to top it with barbecue sauce. So you can use whatever barbecue sauce that you like. I was still trying to keep this on the low carb side, so we used the sugar-free G Hughes barbecue sauce, but everybody in the house loves barbecue sauce, so it doesn't really matter to them, and the G Hughes tastes just like regular, but we've used all kinds of barbecue sauce for this recipe and any kind works. But you're just going to use a basting brush, and you're going to give each portion of the ribs a good lathering you really want a good coating of barbecue sauce and then we're going to stick it into the oven and we're going to get a nice char on them I actually chose to use broil now you can go ahead and use like a 450 degree oven for about 10 to 15 minutes to get that crisp on them but I really like the tops of them like I said to get caramelized with that barbecue sauce so I just stuck it on broil for about 10 minutes and I watched it you don't want the barbecue sauce to burn it still has that sugary sense to it and so you can even see in the corner of my pan that it started to burn just a little bit onto the pan so you have to be careful and keep your eye on it when you're cooking on that kind of high temperature for a quick amount of time or on broil but you guys they were so tender and so flavorful i absolutely love this rib rub what it does to ribs is a game changer and then your choice of barbecue sauce on something that is so tender plus it has that added crisp from the oven it's like the crispy with the sweet and sour on top of the tender it's so so good and I made that with Parmesan orzo, which I have a cooking video for that. So I'll link that up above if you guys want to check out how to make that orzo. It is so, so delicious. It's a really old recipe that my husband and I filmed at like midnight one night, but it is absolutely delicious and it's so good and it's creamy. Just another take on a side dish and some broccoli. But that was it for this time's cooking video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you try any of these recipes, Recipes, make sure to take a picture of it and tag me on Instagram or to come back and leave it in the comments and let me know what you thought. But these are two recipes you do not want to miss and something that my family and I will have over and over again, especially these ribs. It's something we've been doing for a while and that orzo is spot on. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I love you all so much and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.